Hey, Don here. In this lesson, we're going to cover a classic pentatonic picking sequence. We're going to do it descending. And we're going to do it ascending as well. So I'm not just going to give you two licks here. I'm going to give you the keys to the Lamborghini. I'm going to actually give you a full practice routine that you can apply to this whole pattern. And by doing so, you will be able to play it in any key that you want. You will strengthen your knowledge of the pentatonic boxes and your picking will get a real upgrade if you actually do this in the way that I'm going to show you. Do it! So let's get going. So the fast version that I played in the beginning here is in F sharp minor. But I'm going to show this sequence in A minor instead. Uh, and the reason for that is you can see it in uh, context and you can also understand easier how all these boxes connect just in case you're not familiar with these five boxes. I'm gonna move quite quickly here so I'm not gonna go through all the positions in detail I'm basically gonna show you the routine if you're not familiar with these patterns or boxes you can find a link in the description below that you can sign up for my newsletter and you get the lick of the day and all that stuff is 175 at this moment, all for free. If you don't want to do that, you can just Google pentatonic boxes and those are the same ones that I'm gonna be using. So there's nothing spectacularly new here. But uh, the sequence that we're gonna follow in the practice routine, that's gonna make all the difference here. So let's get going. We start here with the first uh, position. And I call this the first position just because we have the root as the lowest note. So there's no official uh, pattern one necessarily. But you take one of the five patterns and then you're going to apply this sequence. And this sequence is a very easy one to learn. Because uh, if we start with the ascending one, start with a downstroke first. And we're going to pick everything here. So it's going to be alternate picking. Basically, you're going to go up six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then restart the pattern from the A string. One, two, three, four, five, six. Restart from the D string. One, two, three, four, five, six. Restart from the G string. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you're done with the ascending part. And then descending is exactly the same thing, but you go backwards. So you go from the E string. Resort on the B string, G string, and the D string. So now the practice routine is gonna entail you taking each of these shapes, starting at the lowest available position without using an open string. So this shape then we start from the first fret here. So we're basically in F minor. Then you go up, uh, you ascend in this position. So you just go up. Then when you get to the top, you shift up a half step and then you go down. Shift up again, go up. And so on, all the way up until you reach the top of your fretboard. And I have 24 frets here. If you have 22 or 21 or 38 it doesn't matter you just go as far as you can on your fretboard uh, even though it's super annoying to play up here uh, do it anyway what are you waiting for do it once you've reached the top you basically just restart but now you want to restart with an upstroke so instead of going down up down up so basically leading with a downstroke to each string since it's an even number you're gonna lead with an upstroke instead so and so on, all the way back again. Uh, and then when you've done that, you guessed it, you take the next position. Now I play the second position in, in the key of A minor, and that's gonna be important later on in the routine. Then you take that shape and move it down so you have the index finger on the first fret, and then you play the sequence. Same thing, you just go up in half steps until you reach the top, and then you uh, start with an upstroke and go down in half steps until, until you back where you started. You take the third shape, do the same thing, fourth shape, same thing, fifth shape, same thing. After you've done that, you're basically one third of the way through the routine. And an important note here is that this routine 
doesn't have to be done all in one day. So it depends on how much time you allot for alternate picking in your practice schedule or even two note per string alternate picking. So let's say you do 20 minutes of two note per string alternate picking per day. You just go as far as you can get in this uh, whole routine. And then you just jot down like, okay, I got to this point in the routine. And then the next day you start where you left off. So you don't need to overcomplicate it like that. Uh, if you do everything in one day, it will probably take you a while, but I mean, that's also fine. That will really help your technique a lot. But even still, don't, don't let it stop you if you feel like, oh, this will take too long. I'm not even gonna do it. Just break it up. It doesn't really matter. And then once you've gone through the routine once, you can basically just reassess and be like, all right, how do I feel about this? Should I, should I do it again? Or am I good? Am I bored with this? Or should I, you know, move on to something else? Or is it worth it to me to go through the whole thing again? So I, I find this way of working on things, it's almost like you have a project instead of just having, you know, a set of exercises you do every day, which I've all, also done. And that works, anything works if you, if you put the reps in. But I think this, this feels uh, better to me at least and it's been really great results with my students as well so again just do as much as you can per day make sure you know where you left off and then you keep going all right we play the first part of the the routine now you want to take these shapes and put them together and what i mean by that is that you're gonna take the first shape Then you're going to move it up, not chromatically, but you're going, to, you're going to move into the second shape. And now I played it twice and stopped on the third, start of the third repetition of it. And that's what I, what I want you to do. So you do that down here. So you start at the first position as before. So you, you do that uh, up in this one. Do that twice and then stop here, slight pause, relax, move up to, to the next key and do the same thing, up and down, move up, same thing, up and down. And then when you get, get up to the top, you do the same thing as before, you do move it down in half steps, but now you start with an upstroke instead. So that would be pattern one, going up in pattern one, down in pattern two. Then when you're done with that, you're going to go up in pattern two and down in pattern three. And when I say up and down here, I mean going from a lower pitch up to a higher pitch. That's up for me. And then down, it's going from a higher pitch down to a lower pitch. So if we start in pattern two here, and again, I'm doing this in the key of A minor initially. And I think that's good because then you can orient yourself because you're in the same key. So it's easier to see. And once you know what you're doing, you move it down to the first fret again and then do it everything chromatically. So I, I'm just going to show this one and then you can figure out the rest. One thing to keep in mind here when you start coupling these together, meaning going up in one shape and down in the next, instead of doing the same shape chromatically, is that you might have to alter the fingerings slightly. And I'm just going to let you find what's most comfortable for you. But for example, when I go up in two, but with the sequence, right? If I go you know, the most ergonomic way of doing it in, in pattern two here would be to keep one finger per fret, but going to four here, it's not going to work very well with, with this shape. Surprise, motherfucker. So instead I go up like that. So I have one, three instead, and then I can shift up with one, three. And then I'm sort of aligned with the descending in the third shape. And then when I get back here, I'm actually gonna be on the index finger, so instead of the second finger. So that's another reason why I want you to do two reps of these couplings, because you might have to change the fingering on the second repetition. It might make all the sense in the world to start here on, on the second finger, but as you come back from this shape, with the index finger, it makes more sense to start with the index finger and sort of stretch your fingers a bit. So I don't want you to be too strict with the fingerings uh, here because you want to be consistent within the same context. But now since the context is changing, instead of doing it chromatically, we're actually coupling uh, positions together. That's a good thing though, because when you're improvising, you don't, you're not going to be 
you're not going to be stuck to a certain fingering. You shouldn't be. So it should be whatever works in that uh, situation. So this is actually a good thing. So I'll, I'm going to let you figure that out yourself. But you do exactly the same thing. You just start with uh, the second shape going up and then down in the third. But you start down here once you found your bearings here in the key of A minor. And then you, you do the same thing all the way up. Start with an upstroke, go all the way down. Then you restart, go up in the shape three, down in shape four, but you start down here, start with a downstroke, go all the way up, start with an upstroke, go all the way down. And then you do that uh, uh, up in five and then down in one as well. So basically you're gonna get, you have five shapes. You go up in one, down in two, up in two, down in three, up in three, down in four, up in four, down in five, up in five, down in one. When you've done that, you've basically covered all the combinations here uh, from one pattern to the next. So whatever pattern you're in, you're gonna be able to go up or down in the pattern and transition from any of the patterns around, you know, to the left or right of the pattern you're in. And that's very powerful when you get used to that because then you basically will always know where you are uh, on the fretboard. That's the second third of this thing. And the last thing you want to do is exactly the same thing but we're gonna start instead of starting we take uh, up in uh, shape one and down in shape two but we're gonna start in shape two so we're gonna go down in shape two and then up in shape one down in shape two again up in shape one and then we stop on the top note. So it's just a slight variation, but I think it's worth doing because a lot of people are so used to starting scales on the lowest note the whole time. So it can get kind of confused when you have to start on the higher note of a scale. So doing the same routine again will really mitigate that. That's the whole routine. And if you do this and you make sure to start with a downstroke down here and an upstroke up here, I think you will be surprised at how much this will help your overall picking. But again, no exercise is gonna help you if you don't do it. So make sure that you really get the practice in. And another thing, if it's not obvious, the tempos here should be slow enough so it's perfect. Uh, and this, this is why I love uh, moving things in half steps across the fretboard. Uh, besides getting all the benefit of uh, you know, the different fret spacings and the tensions on the guitar, uh, you're also going to get, um, you have like milestones, so you can feel like, okay, I'm moving up here and something is happening instead of just sitting in the same position doing the same thing over and over again. It's really easy to tune out then and not sort of focus anymore. Uh, but when you do it this way, you can really gauge like, all right, if you screw it up on, on any one of the frets, I think you should do that fret again. And if you keep screwing up, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, strings ringing that shouldn't be ringing or even worse, you, you're getting unsynchronized, you should definitely slow it down so it's perfect. Uh, so that should be the goal, to get through the whole thing perfectly. Uh, and obviously you're going to make mistakes at some point, so that's no big deal. But if you make a lot of mistakes, you're just practicing too quickly. So you just want to find a tempo where everything is perfect and you, it feels good and it sounds good. Uh, and when, when you're going through the whole routine like that, that's where you've really made a big difference in your picking technique. And like I said, you won't be Eric Johnson after doing this routine once, uh, but if you do this routine a few times, I think you'll feel a real difference in your overall picking technique. All right, that's it for this one. If you have any questions, just post them below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.